My name is Megan Monroe, and I have been in China for 98 days. We've been quarantined for 56 of those days, and I've been free for 42 of those days. I am part of a company called ProStage, and I am over here so that I can be a good role model for kids and eventually become a theater, dance, and public speech teacher. We, we got to work with the kids one-on-one -on -one and in person before, and now we've been working with students online. I'm going to tell you about what I'm doing here. I got a phone call around October of last year, 2019, asking me if I wanted to be an artistic advisor for a theater company. When I asked the location, she said China. And being in California and never have gone going abroad before, I said, okay, sure, and here I am. Wuhan is the biggest city that I've ever been in. My hometown had 300,000 people in it, and Wuhan is home to 11.3 million people. There are over 160 lakes in Wuhan, and my apartment building just so happens to sit next to the Sanjiaohu, which is the Triangle or Delta Lake. I haven't seen buildings as big as the ones in Wuhan in my entire life. I currently live in a 30-story building on the 10th floor, and my entire life I've lived in a single-story house. So it's a little bit different for me to be in an apartment than being in my home. In the beginning of the quarantine, I got in contact with the U.S. Embassy that's located in Beijing and they called me back after a few days saying that they could help me with um, departure assistance so that I could get out of here. But the United States is charging its citizens $1,100, 7,700 yuan to fly out of here and then get quarantined for two weeks. I didn't really want to waste my money on that and my mom thought that I would be safer here in my apartment than on a plane with a lot of people. So I'm just here and I'm trying to be positive about everything and I wish I had gone home but I'm glad that I didn't go home because I've been able to communicate with so many people and be a very real open um, news source for everybody. We started making TikToks on the first day of the quarantine because we wanted to exhibit what was actually happening. After that, it's become our way of being positive news. So we try to show people the best of the worst situation that we're in. Um, nothing on there is really a lie. Everything's pretty honest because I'm a pretty positive person anyways. And I just want to spread that positivity to people all around the world who are dealing with the same thing. As far as TikTok goes, that's not the platform that I would have first thought to do for um, this kind of news, but it's been one of the most beneficial ones. There's a lot of positive comments on there. A lot of people are telling me that I'm a hero, which I think is a little bit too far, but also I'm very gracious for that. But some people are saying that they wish I would die and that the government is paying me to make these videos and that it's propaganda. And here I am on Real China Daily News to tell you, no, I'm not being paid by the government. It's not propaganda and I'm not going to die because I'm stronger than this virus and you are too. I just care about being a good role model for my kids because I want them to be able to speak up about the things that are important to them and maybe someday have their own TikTok channels where they can have people listening to the important things they have to say. I'm just here to give the news from my perspective. Um, a lot of people in the United States are freaking out about this virus. When I posted one of my videos, someone said, obviously you're not going to get the virus because you're white. But that's not how the virus works. It's spread all over the world now. It doesn't care what your race is. People that are saying that are just racist against Chinese people. So I think that everyone just needs to take a step back and meet each other in the middle so that we can mitigate all of the negative effects that have been coming from this.
My daily life has definitely changed. Um, before the quarantine, I would wake up and come into the office and do various tasks. And I'd spend the weekends going grocery shopping and exploring the city of Wuhan. One time I jumped onto the Metrolink and I just took it very far in one direction and I ended up at East Lake, which is actually a really pretty lake that's famous in Wuhan. Um, since then, I haven't really been able to go outside much. On the first day when we went to the supermarket, all of the vegetables had been taken off of the shelves and bought and everybody was running around trying to get instant noodles and rice and other things for their home. After a couple of days, it settled down and you could go to the grocery store um, pretty regularly. But then after the quarantine got more strict, they started delivering groceries to communities. In our community, they have grocery deliveries and you can order a big bag of vegetables or eggs and fish and garlic and stuff. Someone from the community will bring in a couple orders of bread and will stand out on the basketball court and knock off their name on the piece of paper so that we can um, make sure that everybody's getting what they ordered. Chinese people have been very resilient during this time and it makes a lot of sense, um, especially in Wuhan for when this virus continues to spread. I think that everyone needs to look at other countries and especially look towards China to see what China has done for this virus because we can only overcome this together.